Is salicylic acid the skincare ingredient you've been looking for? If used well and on the right person, it can be game changing for your skincare. Hi everyone, I'm Dr. Sapna. I'm a doctor who's worked in dermatology, studied derm, and I suffer with acne. Luckily, this makes me the perfect person to talk about all things skin. So subscribe if that's what you're interested in. You can find me on Instagram at Dr. Sapna Skin. So let's get started. This video is all about salicylic acid. It's a really popular ingredient in the skincare world right now. It's an ingredient that suits some people and not others, and we're gonna talk about why. I'll talk about who it's for, how to use it, and my current recommendations. At the end of this video, there'll be a mini Q&A that will hopefully answer everything you need to know about salicylic acid. As with all these videos, all my recommendations are my own, based on my own experiences, some of these have been gifted to me. This is not an ad, this is not a sponsored video. These are just recommendations of things I like. So first of all, what is salicylic acid? Salicylic acid is also known as beta hydroxy acid. It comes from a compound found in willow bark, which is incidentally the same place you get aspirin from. That doesn't mean you should be putting aspirin on your skin. Nowadays, it's usually synthetically made. That doesn't make it a bad thing. It often means it's just formulated in more stable preparations so that it can have the best effect on your skin. So salicylic acid is a beta hydroxy acid and it's pretty much the only well-known beta hydroxy acid that we have in skincare at the moment. It's different to alpha hydroxy acids. Alpha hydroxy acids are water soluble, whereas beta hydroxy acids are oil soluble. We'll talk about why being oil soluble is helpful for acne prone skin. So what does salicylic acid actually do? It's an ingredient that's formulated mostly to target acne. I'm gonna mention my acne formation triangle. These are the three steps that are involved in acne formation. I'll talk about this a lot. If you wanna know more about the steps of acne formation, have a look at my video that I posted before involving these three steps and explaining what's going on. By the way, in this video, I'm gonna be talking about beta hydroxy acids and salicylic acids, and I kind of use those words interchangeably. In the current skincare space, they are the same thing. There is no other beta hydroxy acids that are well used in skincare. So I kind of forget and use the words interchangeably like everyone else. So what does salicylic acid actually do? Number one is exfoliation. Now exfoliation basically means to remove your outer layer of skin cells and a beta hydroxy acid or salicylic acid is an example of a chemical exfoliant. That means you're not physically removing the skin cells, you're letting these chemicals dissolve some of the stickiness between your skin cells. So salicylic acid is very good at dissolving these desmosomes, which is that glue that's sticking those skin cells together. In someone who suffers with acne, you have hyperkeratinization, which is this excessive stickiness of skin cells, which makes it harder to shed off skin cells properly. And that's why a chemical exfoliant really helps those skin cells effectively shed off. And as these skin cells sh and as these skin cells shed, oh, skin cells shed. Ugh. And as these skin cells shed, they send signals down to deeper levels of the skin, encouraging new growth of healthy skin cells and collagen production. The second way that salicylic acid helps with acne is oil control. The oil that's produced on our skin is called sebum. In acne, you have excessive sebum production. Salicylic acid works really well with this. Because it is oil soluble, it can cut through that excessive oil and sebum on the surface of your skin. It signals to your sebaceous glands to control its oil production. The third way that salicylic acid helps your skin is that it's also a tyrosinase inhibitor. What this means is that it helps inhibit the enzyme that encourages melanin production and dark spots. There are other tyrosinase inhibitors like alpha-arbutin, kojic acid, L-ascorbic acid that probably do this better, but salicylic acid does this alongside its other properties. Salicylic acid can also be anti-inflammatory. I say this with an asterisk because like other skincare, things are only anti-inflammatory if it's used properly. If it's not used properly, it can actually encourage inflammation rather than having this anti-inflammatory effect that we actually need. The biggest issue with salicylic acid is actually overuse or using it in the wrong skincare routine that encourages inflammation and makes you have that dryness, irritation and side effects that will all make acne worse if it's not used properly. In medicine, salicylic acid has actually been around for a pretty long time. It's been used in much higher strength formulations for things like psoriasis, warts, even dandruff. In really high percentages, it's also used as chemical peels. You can buy some slightly dodgy, higher percentage serums on Amazon that I just wouldn't recommend. They come in five, 10, and 20% salicylic acid. 
and there is no way in hell I would put that on my face. You really have no idea what is in those random formulations. You risk getting chemical burns, hyperpigmentation, having some really dangerous stuff on your face. If you're having a proper chemical cosmetic peel completed in an authorized clinic, they can use much higher percentages, but I wouldn't recommend anyone doing that at home on their own. I'm just gonna talk a little bit about your formulation and pH of salicylic acid. So it is an acid, it has a low pH. Sometimes this is something that's talked about a lot. Some skincare brands put this on their packaging. My honest opinion is that if you're a regular consumer of skincare, I just wouldn't bother worrying about the pH of a product at all. Especially salicylic acid because it is oil soluble. The formulations are really complicated because you'll see that not all salicylic acids are in oils and it all affects how salicylic acid works on the skin. In theory, salicylic acid works at a lower pH. However, there are loads of studies that tell us because salicylic acid is oil soluble and is structurally quite different to other acids, the pH is less important on how it actually works. So I would pretty much just ignore it. So let's finally get onto the juicy stuff. What are the products that I would recommend for salicylic acid? First of all, for all of these formulations, I'd just say start off really slowly. Using salicylic acid twice a week is the best place to start. You can build up to using it more frequently after a couple of weeks or a month, but just start off really slow because you really don't know how your skin will react. You can use salicylic acid morning or night, it doesn't really matter. It just depends on what else you're using in your skincare routine. Most salicylic acid products are formulated as leave-on toners, but there are also serums available and cleansers, and I'll go through some of my favorites. These are all products that I've tried. Some of them I still have on my shelf that I'm gonna talk through. Some of them I threw away in an old clear out, so I'll just post a picture of what I had. I'm just gonna start with the big one that everyone wants to know about, the Paula's Choice 2% BHA. It's a toner liquid, which means you can either put it on a cotton pad and swipe over your face, or you can put it into your hands and just pat it into your skin. This is the first step you do after cleansing. Would I say this is my favorite? I'm not sure. Would I say it works? Absolutely. This is very good at helping with congestion. It helps with those under the surface, tiny little whiteheads and the blackheads that I get on the top of my nose. My only disclaimer is that it's really easy to go overboard with this. You initially feel like it's not doing anything, so you just wanna use it every single day. It actually works best when I use it once a week. This retails for £34. You can definitely get it cheaper with voucher codes and things, but these are just prices that are on Cult Beauty. The next one, which I think is my favorite is the Medicate Press and Clear. This works in a very similar way to the Paula's Choice. It's also like a liquid toner formulation. You have a little pump here at the top that you can just press your cotton bud on. If you don't want to use a cotton bud, you kind of just press the sides and let it collect and then pat it on your skin. The reason I like this more is because it actually has this encapsulated technology, which means it time releases. So it actually slowly releases from the surface of your skin into your blocked pores. This makes it much gentler, so I could actually tolerate using this almost every day after using it for a few months. It's what I'd use if you have slightly more sensitive skin or if you're not that used to quite harsh skincare. Conveniently, this also costs £34. The next one that I don't actually have on me but I still love is Sunday Riley UFO. I think that stands for Ultra Facial Oil. Conveniently, it also costs £34 on Cult Beauty. I absolutely love this product. It does have a slightly strange scent to it, but I kind of love it. It's an oil formula, which means you have to use it slightly differently. Instead of using this serum as the second step in your skincare routine, if you are using a hydrating serum, like a hyaluronic acid serum, you can actually put this oil on after that and before your moisturizer. Having this oil formulation made it slightly less drying than the toners. So if you get those dry patches of skin, especially when you put foundation on and you see dry patches around your spots, I'd actually recommend using this oil formula instead. And also just a kind of special mention to Sunday Riley because their products are so aesthetically pleasing, the boxing, the packaging, it just makes it so enjoyable to use for a skincare nerd like me. The next one is the Pixi Clarity range. So I've used the cleanser and the toner from this range. This toner is very similar to the Medicaid toner. It's much lighter, much more gentle than the Paula's Choice one, and you use it in the same way after cleansing, you put that on. They also have this cleanser, which is delightful. This is a cleanser that you can use every day. Again, I'd build up to that usage, but it's much more gentle than the toners, probably because it's not a leave-on product. So if you're worried about irritation or dryness, I'd definitely start with the cleanser. Both of these Pixi products are £18, so it's a little bit more affordable than the other ones. 
if you're a teenager looking to get into more skincare and you suffer with acne or spots, or if you just get the odd spot here and there, the Pixie range is a great place to start. The next one to mention is the Ordinary 30% AHA and 2% BHA peeling solution. Now this is an at-home peel. It's not as strong as the chemical peels that you have in clinic, but it's only a 2% salicylic acid solution mixed in with AHA. I really like this. However, it is hardcore. I would recommend using it maximum once a week if you don't have other salicylic acid products in your routine. The combination of this AHA and BHA solution basically leaves my skin looking brighter, clearer, almost instantly. You leave it on for a maximum of 10 minutes. I wouldn't recommend using it longer than that because it can cause quite severe redness and irritation for lots of people. I don't love using masks and treatments like that as long-term solutions for acne. I think you need something that's easy to put in your day-to-day -day routine, but really effective preventative stuff, but it's definitely one to watch. I also wanted to mention this salicylic acid exfoliating scalp treatment. I know this is not strictly for acne, but this is a really good use of salicylic acid. It's basically a scalp treatment that helps with dandruff. You use it just for 10 minutes before you wash your hair. The very first use basically helped encourage all the dandruff to actually come out. So it looked like I have worse dandruff for the first time, but afterwards, and I kept persisting, it helped completely remove dandruff from the top of my scalp. I use it maybe every third hair wash, and that's enough to maintain a dandruff-free scalp. It's a really watery formulation that you can just apply because of the nozzle and it's available for I think $14.99. I definitely recommend it if you have problems with dandruff. These are just some of my recommendations. I know people have had different experiences than me and you might have a product that I haven't tried yet so I really want to know. Let me know in the comments or you can DM me and don't forget to subscribe to the channel. For the last part of this video I'm just going to talk about some common questions that I've been sent about salicylic acid and BHA. First of all, is salicylic acid good for blackheads? The answer to that is yes. I found that the Paula's Choice is particularly good for blackheads on your nose. Salicylic acid gets into the pores and push out some of that blocked dead skin cells and oil to help remove your blackheads. The next question was, should I use salicylic acid if I don't have acne? If you have skin that is not prone to breakouts and you don't have under the skin congestion or blackheads, you don't really need salicylic acid. It shouldn't cause much harm. There is that risk of dryness and irritation that you probably don't need. Instead, I'd opt for an AHA, something much more gentle that will give that even skin tone and brightening effect. The next question, which is a really good question, is does salicylic acid cause purging? If you don't know what purging is, it's basically when you start a new active ingredient like an exfoliant like vitamin A that causes a breakout in the short term to try and create less breakouts in the long term. The theory behind that is that salicylic acid increases your skin cell turnover rate quicker than it removes that congestion from the surface of your skin. This basically means that if you've got some spots kind of brewing under the skin and the surface, it kind of pushes it forward and creates a big eruption really. Whilst that's extremely distressing in the short term, after a couple of weeks, a couple of months, that does clear and you get those benefits. The ways to prevent that is actually to just introduce these actives really, really slowly, using them, like I said, twice a week and then building up your usage. At some point, I could do a full video on the difference between irritation and purging because it's quite a complex topic. So let me know if that's something that would be useful. The next question is, can salicylic acid be used if you have dry skin? In theory, yes. If you have a preparation that's not too drying and you're using very supportive skincare around it, there's no reason you can't use salicylic acid if you have dry skin and you do suffer from breakouts. A good example would be the Sunday Riley UFO. I'd use that if you had slightly dry skin. The only caveat I'd say to that is if your skin is true Really dry before you're trying to target your acne with exfoliation you really need to give it some TLC. What I mean by that is really helping your barrier function with good moisturizers, avoiding irritation and that's a mistake I've definitely made before. I'd actually say cut back from all your actives for at least four or five weeks seeing if you can control that drying effect and then reintroducing your exfoliating acids. If answering these questions were useful, please send me a message or comments for any other questions that you have, and I'll continue to put them into other videos and answer them as best as I can. Just to summarize this video, we've talked about salicylic acid, how it helps with your acne formation, and my all important recommendations for salicylic acid and how to put it in your skincare routine. Please let me know if this was useful. Subscribe if you wanna hear more about skincare, salicylic acid, acne, everything, and hopefully I'll see you on another video.